everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Chanel in the City. I'm your host, Chanel Omari, and I have a very special guest here today. She doesn't need an intro. She is the Countess, the Countess Luann de Lesseps, the OG from the Real Housewives of New York City and a worldwide music artist. How can we forget? Please welcome my good friend, Luann de Lesseps. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Did I hear you playing Chic Say La Vie in the background? <laughs> the whole playlist. Not only that, Viva La Diva, Money Can't Buy You Class. I love that song. I mean, your music inspires mm -hmm. all of us. You know, no. I feel like every time I'm having a bad day, I just listen to you and I'm just like, you know, <laughs> it's like listening to Madonna. I just feel like you're in that same category. You're, you know, you're really made it big and I'm so proud and happy for you because it just puts a smile on everyone's face, you know? Oh, good. Thank you. And you look gorgeous. Thank you, sweetheart. Beautiful. Love your headband. I know. Thank you. Style K Studio. Shout out to them. <laughs> I need one of those. With I'm gonna, we're going to send you a bunch of stuff. They're like the best. And they're big fans of the Countess. They're like, no, you're not talking to her today. I'm like, we'll show you soon. Awesome. So first of all, congratulations on the amazing premiere, season 13, Real Housewives of New York City. Wow. What an, a season already. Um, talk to us a little bit about why this season's different for you rather than well, all. Well, I mean, it was, I mean, it was such a crazy year. I mean, we had, you know, COVID, Black Lives Matter and matters and, and the election. So, I mean, it was a really difficult time to, uh, to film. I got to give it to our production crew who were so amazing because, you know, they cleared the way for us and we had to go through a lot of red tape, as you can imagine. You know, we couldn't really go anywhere. It's hard, it was hard to go out to restaurants where I, we usually go. Uh, we couldn't travel. I mean, so it was really a tough year. We had, you know, um, we're only five cast members this season. So, you know, normally we're six or kind of seven. So, you know, there was a lot uh, on the five of us women to produce a show that hit it out of the park as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, I was going to the season going, you know, what, what's going to happen this year? And especially with what's happening in the world. I mean, how, what are we going to do? And, um, and it just, it just worked, you know, I think we have a tight bond, the girls that are on the show this season, I think Ebony makes a great new cast member. And, um, and, you know, I think it's one of our best seasons yet. And it's a lot of fun. You know, we were all going through such shit that, you know, we wanted to have a good time. And so I think you're going to see that reflect also on the season. You know? I love that you, and also we talk about, you know, Ebony being, you love Ebony. Uh, talk to us about why you think she fits in so well. Cause the first two episodes, I mean, she pretty much fits in with you, Leah and all the girls pre pretty fast. Yeah, she does. And then we hit a roadblock, but that, that you'll have to watch and see. And, you know, I think that she makes a good cast member because she feels comfortable in the group. And I think that's the most important thing is to have somebody who is comfortable and doesn't look out of place, uh, who, uh, who understands what it is to be, you know, on the Housewives of New York, who's, you know, a smart woman, who's um, somebody I respect, you know, and that's important. And, uh, and it helps that she's gorgeous. Right. <laughs> it helps that you're all gorgeous. You all uh, look stunning. Uh, stunning. I mean, let's talk about Watch What Happens Live for a second. I mean, it recently aired right before the season started and you all look beautiful. You looked amazing. Um, talk to us about also just how that felt. To be on Watch What Happens Live? Um, I saw you on Watch What Happens Live, by the way. No, thank you. You were the only, and you were the only one who was like, I'm proud of you. You look great. great. Chanel. He looked great and, you know, and it was fun to see all the history of the Bravo shows because a lot of them I didn't even know. And so it was, it was cool to watch. You know, listen, uh, it, it, it's always hard to do a show like Watch What Happens Live. I felt like I was at the reunion with five women <laughs> trying to talk. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of personalities going on there, but I thought it was fun and Watch What Happens Live is supposed to be fun. And um, so, so it was a good time. So Leah, let's talk about, because Leah on the Watch What Happened Live, live episode, because um, there was like some stuff, like she was getting a little bit annoyed of, were you, are you guys still as close this season? Or you want to talk to Leah me and I? about your, yeah, your history? Yeah, like, Leah and I, season. yeah, she just called me actually. <laughs> <laughs> Call her back. Um, yeah, Leah and I are, are very close. Um, and, you know, 
we have our moments too, because we're both strong women and, you know, sometimes we butt heads and, you know, that's just what it is. I mean, if you, um, if you care about somebody, you're going to make, you know, your point so that you can fix whatever the, the ruffle is in, in a relationship. Right. So otherwise I just, you know, I don't even bother. So I, uh, I bother with Leah cause I like her very much. And, you know, she came in only last season on the show too, right? This is her second season, right? Yep. Yeah. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Um, so, you know, and she feels like she's been there for, you know, right along almost. Um, and she brings in Ebony, which is great. And I forgot what the original question was. Oh, just if, how you, if you are still close, which you answered, you are. You oh, know. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lee and I um, are friends on and off the show. So now let's get to Ramona, because we all are loving the fact that you and Ramona are besties. The first two episodes yeah. we see. I mean, we, we, we don't know the whole season. So talk to us how that happened. And you both live next to each other and next to your ex, which God bless you. <laughs> Please tell me how you're coping with it. Because I can't even run into my ex in a grocery store. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't run into Tom, I, um, but I can see his apartment from here. <laughs> so crazy well you have to remember during covid right. you know i i was looking for an apartment and i didn't really want to come into the city i literally found one apartment that i thought looked really great i saw it and i was like this is perfect i mean this you know it's got an open kitchen uh i have room for my piano I i've got it. a marble bathroom with a soaking tub and high ceilings and a balcony and so it had everything. And I looked at the view and I went, oh, this is great. I didn't even notice. That's how much in a hurry I was. And so, you know, as I was moving in, I'm standing here waiting for the, for the movers to come. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> I planted those shrubs. I planted those trees. Right. You're like, <laughs> I deserve to live here no matter what. Okay. Well, you know, the good news is that now I know when he's in town, whether the lights are on or not. So I don't have to run him into him at the supermarket. So you haven't even run into him yet? No, 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 oh, no. Good. I don't think he's here very much. I think he's spending his time in the red state of Florida. That's awesome. And then you and Ramona, why do you think you guys are getting along mostly this season so far? Well, because she's nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you so much. You're the best. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, if you're nice to me, I'm nice back. You know, yeah. when you're not nice to me, then I'm not nice back. So... I think, you know, we found kind of a rhythm and uh, we're working, we're going with it. And, you know, we're, we do literally live blocks away from each other, so. That's amazing. We loved seeing that on Watch What Happens Live. We love seeing in the first two episodes. I just, the first two episodes are amazing. I mean, like, I can't wait for the third. Oh, so. dude. oh wait till tonight. It's so good. It's, it's oh. fun. I don't come on till a little later. So you're gonna be like, where's Lou? Um, but, uh, cause we're getting ready to go to the Hamptons, so. Oh, that's always fun. Let's talk also a little bit about your relationship with Sonia. I know you and Ramona have voiced some concerns in the beginning of just you aren't as close to her as last season. And I know you have been close to her. Um, why do you think that is? Or what's what can you what can you share with us, the audience of like why that is? Well, because sometimes Sonia goes MIA and uh, she happened to go MIA. And, you know, again, uh, if, if somebody doesn't return your calls or your messages, you, you know, after a while, it's like, okay, fine. And so, you know, she went MIA. So we just didn't see her. And we talk about that in the first episode, which is like, where have you been? I mean, and she, I love it when she said she was in the desert. <laughs> I, know. I just picture her carrying a cross across the desert. And, and I picture her like with a, with a wrap around her head on a camel being like, what is this? Where's Sonia by Sonia Morgan? Where you been? I've been in the desert. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'll give you a pass. You know, it is what it is. Sonia's, you know, Sonia's uh, got her own little, lives in her own little bubble these days. And, uh, but you know, you'll, you'll see as we go along, things progress. <laughs> right. We're excited for that. We want to talk about your cabaret because we missed you in the cabaret for a year. And, you know, your cabaret, you know, I've been to so many of your shows. So many of our mutual friends have been. Fans love you. You really inspire us. These shows, like, help us through a hard time. 
talk to us about what it, what it was for you, not, you know, going, going through it for a year, because, you know, you're a strong woman and you've coped with it and you've been so gracious, but like, talk to us about that process and talk to us about what we can anticipate. Like, what can we get excited? Well, you know, I, um, the last show I did was in January, 2020. Yep. I was there. Yeah. So you, you were at that show, right? So it was a very last show. And, um, and, you know, I wanted to take a break because I'd literally been on the road for two years straight uh, and did 80 shows across the country. So uh, so I was looking forward to taking February and March off. Little did I know that it would become a pandemic and this would be going on for as long as it did, you know. So, um, you know, I've been asked to do shows and do online stuff. I just, you know, I feel like cabaret is such an intimate thing. I really wanted to be in a performance space and I didn't think it would last as long as it did on, um, you know, this whole shutdown, but, you know, so even more exciting for me to get back on stage. I have shows coming up in December um, and I have a new Christmas song coming out. So I decided that I would start off my new uh, cabaret show with holiday shows. So I love super your excited. Show. it's um, going to kick off in December. So stay tuned on Instagram, everybody out there. Um, doing a lot of shows in Florida. Uh, I'm right now negotiating what venue I'm doing in New York. So I will be in New York for Christmas. I just don't know where yet, maybe back at 54 below or talking with them. It's just a matter of working on um, dates, but even more so super excited about my Christmas song, which is, you know, uh, written, you know, just for me with Billy Stritch and uh, Bruce Roberts. Wow. So it's really, Awesome, and you'll see some of the housewives involved in this song. Oh, that's gonna be so exciting! A little congrats. I'm so happy for you, and I we love your music. So, like, <laughs> we need well, this in our lives. Like, this is yeah. the highlight of the holidays. It's really fun, and you'll see. You know, you'll see some of that play out on the housewives this season. That's what was my next question. Like, is that part of your journey of like going through the whole process? Okay, so we have that to be excited. So, about. oh yeah, I'm still working on my music and. Uh, an upcoming tour and super excited about, you know, COVID being behind us and people feeling comfortable in the theaters again, you know? Oh yeah. I'm, and I'm excited. I'm going to be buying my tickets and going, <laughs> coming to see you and root you and cheer you on because I'm single. So what do I have to do? That's hey, my hey, hey that's my night out. You know what? I always tell also the audience, they always tell me how is the cabaret? Cause they they're dying to come to the cabaret. I said, if you're single or you're not, or you want to go on a date night, Check out Countess Luann. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fun night. It's a fun night. And you really make it fun and you engage with everyone. You know, mm -hmm. I've never seen a performer who really like sits there and engages with everyone they know, sees familiar faces. You call us out like in a, it's so nice. It's, it feels so warm. Countess and friends. Well, that's, you know, you know, it's going to be an all new show. And that's the whole, you know, point of why I wanted to do cabaret is that, you know, I like to sing for my friends. I like to tell them jokes yep. and, um, and I love to entertain. So, you know, it's perfect. It's perfect. perfect. We can't wait. Uh, let's talk about, so we have some fan lightning questions uh, about the season about you. Can you give us, so you were recently, by the way, you, everyone is talking about how hot you look. Okay. We all know a little bit about you uh, going on the all-stars trip. I know you can't share too much, but is there any secrets that, at all that you can share with us, like drama or who you got along with the most or how the trip was? I mean, such a cool, you, you look so good. It's amazing. Uh, thanks. It was, it was actually, you know, it was very, I was very trepidatious about going on this trip because I didn't know a lot of the women. I didn't know uh, Kenya. Of course, you know, Cynthia is my girl and I've never met uh, Kyle from Beverly. I have met Kyle, but very briefly, don't know her well at all. And I was really surprised at how, I mean, I laughed a lot with Kyle and Kenny and I really hit it off. And, you know, everybody said that she's a drama queen and whatever. And it's funny because, you know, I was probably the most, uh, um, the, mo the, the person I didn't know the most surprised me the most, uh, meaning, that she was just the opposite of what I thought she was going to be. So that um, makes sense. So it was surprising, and that was Kenya. So, um, and you know, so the, it's it's a great trip. Of course, there's always drama because you know you have all these women from all the different franchises together. Um, so there's always drama, but there's always um, some good fun and bonding moments. And you know, we talk a lot about 
you know, our families and things you might not have known about us from the franchises that we've been on. So it's really cool. I, I, I can't that. wait for the fans to see it because it's really something different from the housewives. It's not just a housewife's trip. It's a totally different animal. We can't wait. We're so excited. And thank you for sharing that with us. Can you, okay. So now we, a little bit, um, we're switching gears. Are you still, so a fan wants to know, are you still in touch with Bethany since she left the show? And will you go to her wedding if she invites you? Uh, no, I haven't been in touch with Bethany, you know, uh, Bethany's, you know, left the show and kind of has moved on and that's, that's cool. And, uh, you know, and I wish her the best. I'm, you know, neither here nor there. She, you know, we are not in touch. Um, I think she even moved from the Hamptons. I don't even know if she's in the Hamptons anymore. So then do you think if, so she's probably going to make it a small wedding. You're not, you're not anticipating. No. You be offended if you're not invited. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, what do you think this season is without Dorinda? Because I know you, you, you had a friendship with her and stuff like that. Are you? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, listen, Dorinda and I are still in touch. You know, it was a totally different season without her. You know, it's always, you know, it's not, it's never fun to see a housewife go and et cetera. Um, but we keep in touch. In fact, I'm having dinner with her next week. So I love that. I love that you're, you're such a real person. We always talk about this, you know, that you and I bonded because I feel like you're you're the same way you are on the show off the show and I we all respect that about you yeah. it's funny because I was talking to a friend before and he, he goes oh I love Luann like the only person I care about talk, to talk to is Luann and I think oh. because you you're such an icon and because you're cool because you stay in touch and you're not just in it for showbiz like some others no friends. not at all the, you know when I make friendships I'm a, I'm a loyal friend and that's why I sing it in my song you know um I think that's in the girl code. I'm the yep. type of girl that's always loyal to the end. Yes, and I was yeah. listening to that before. People come and go, but I'll always be your friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and you like, I'm not going to get emotional or try, but no. You've been such a good friend to me. No, <laughs> you're, so sweet. you're a good girl. I like my good girls. I know, and I appreciate it because you've always, you just gave me, I just want everyone to listen because I think people give up hope and it's like, hmm you really, really believed in me and you stuck with me. And I feel like you're always there for me and you're always supporting me. Like you never, you just, you're just a good person. And just, I'm thankful for our friendship. Yeah. And, and you're a good person too. That's why we connect. That's exactly as I'm crying. I, I need to learn from you a little bit of how to be stronger, you know, not to cry every second. Well, you know what? Listen, showing uh, vulnerability, I think is a very big sign of strength. So love that. Okay. And you, I know we don't have that much time, but we're going to go through this quickly. You recently said that you're dating again. Um, how does a countess meet men? Are you on a dating app? And yeah. So um, how does that go? Like, how does, you know, how does that go? With dating <laughs> how, does that app? Work? <laughs> how does that work? Well, you know, I, it was a pandemic. Okay. So my niece is like, you got to be on a dating app, Aunt Lou. So um, I think you met my niece, Nicole, before. Yes. I so, love her. Uh, She's so cool. I know. So she, she got me all into it. And, uh, and I did meet a guy like right out of the gate. And he actually is even on the show, uh, Garth, who you see. And, you know, and it kind of it started with a sizzle and it kind of fizzled, but that's okay. Cause we're, we're friends and, you know, <clears throat> everybody's got their thing. And um, anyway, so I, I want to get off the dating apps. I'm not really using them um, because I feel like, you know, it's the end of pandemic. It's hard time to get out there and meet people in person. And I'm just not a dating app person. I like to, you know, it's like, I'm like a bad online shopper too. I like to touch and feel things. <laughs> Me too. Like the old school way. Yes. <laughs> we need that vitamin D physically. Okay, guys, we don't need it virtually anymore. We need I'm to enough. touch and feel men. <laughs> <laughs> As long as, yeah, they earn it for sure. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about like what kind of man you're looking for this time around? Well, what I'm looking for, um, actually, you know, I've been, I, I was in Mexico a lot and I met a very cute guy from Mexico. Um, so I would say I want somebody with a lot of integrity, good manners, someone who is loyal, uh, someone who worships the ground that I walk on and tall, dark, and handsome. Ooh, I like that. Tall, I like that. I like tall, that. I, I gotta, handsome. I'm going to, I'm going to keep some. And younger. Me. And younger. I agree. I agree. 
because you deserve it all. <laughs> uh, you also said you would marry again for the third time. And is that something you still feel you want to do if you find the right person? Oh, well, listen, I'm not in a big hurry to get married again. I'm, you know, I've been married twice. They say three times the charm though. So I never say never. I am a hopeless romantic, but I'm not in any rush to get married. That's for sure. Um, I just, you know, I'd love to be in a relationship that for sure. Um, but I don't, you know, necessarily have to get married. No. Any tips from your um, experience for us single women out there you know, who want to be career woman and we want to date, but it's really hard to date. I mean, what's your advice for us to just attract the right? Well, person? you know, I feel like the dating apps are great for that, you know, for flirting and at least get putting yourself out there and, you know, definitely want to FaceTime them or call them before you even meet up. Um, uh, let's see. And, you know, being sexy and being, um, you know, vulnerable and um, and being real about where you are, I think is, is people have been through so much. I think just being honest and, you know, getting your sexy on and um, making an effort, you know, making an effort to be personable, making an effort to go out, you know, to places where, you know, now that we can go out uh, safely, obviously, but you know, I went to church on Sunday. I was hoping to meet somebody, but you know. Wow, Lou, that's so cool. That's amazing. I, know, I went to church. I haven't been <laughs> to church in so long. I'm connecting with my spiritual side once again. You know, um, I love yeah, that. it just, I had this epiphany. Like I used to go to church, you know, growing up, et cetera. And I'm not, you know, big religious person, but I just feel like it's a place of connecting, yeah. you know? of soul connecting. So wherever you can, you know, I was gonna take a Spanish lesson because, you know, I like this Mexican guy, but you know, things like that, like doing something out of your comfort zone so that you can meet other people. I think that's a really good thing to do. It's like, oh, do I really wanna do that? And, you know, and I think it's, I think it's important to, you know, uh, test yourself and do different things. So you meet different people and get yourself out there because you can't catch any fish from the dock. You gotta get onto the boat. You heard that, ladies? You gotta listen <laughs> to the Countess because you you know the best. You also have books on it as well. Sorry about that. You also have um, books about it as well, which is people can learn some tips. So I recommend you- Oh, oh book. yeah, my good, good old favorite class with the Countess, Living with Elegance and Flair. There are some very good tips in that book, I do have to say. And yeah. I think it's still on Amazon, that book. It but is. anyway, <laughs> um, and I must say also, you know, not drinking has been uh, pivotal for me in terms of like reconnecting to that, you know, that power side of myself. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm also working on making a non-alcoholic sparkling rosé. So that's <gasps> exciting. I'm so excited because yeah, you know, it, it's really good. Because it's, it's funny really that you say that about, I wanted to ask you how the sobriety is going, especially during COVID, because it's hard, you know, for me, even sometimes in the industry, listen, I don't drink a lot, but I, I could turn to drink drinking very easily just because right. it helps. Right. So right. how do you, I mean, that's amazing. How did you really stay strong? Like what made you stay so strong? Well, I, I, like I said, I, you know, I just, I don't feel, I, I'm not as happy when I do drink, you know what I mean? I'm happier when I don't drink. And so, you know, it's taken me, you know, all these years to figure it out, but you know, I think it changes. I think that, um, what used to work for me doesn't work for me anymore. And it's just knowing that and being in touch with, um, with that side of myself that, you know, keeps me from going back. You know what I mean? It's just like, I, I feel good now. And so, you know, I don't see the benefit in it for me. And that's why, you know, I wanted to make uh, this sparkling rosé because for me, it's, it's as long as I have a drink in my hand, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, and, and I feel ultimately a lot better. So there you go. When can we expect it? So we can buy, it. uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be out this fall. Um, and it's just an ele an elevated sparkling, which is, um, really delicious and low calorie and looks fancy. Well, I'll, I'm going to be buying a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I'm tired of Perrier, you know, I'm tired of Perrier. We need, listen, we need, a we need an alternative. Yeah. Luan non-alcoholic drink. I think that 
is genius. Genius. Yeah. Because everybody's going to follow in your footsteps and you're setting a really good example. Not that there's pressure, but. Well, yeah, no, but I just feel like there's no real good alternatives out there for, you know, like I was in Miami and I ordered a, um, how do you call a mocktail? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always not good. It's right. always too sweet. Yep. You know, and I feel like there's something missing there. So that's uh, what I'm working on. Love it. And we're almost, we're almost wrapping up. Um, okay. This question is from the fan, they want to know, um, Carol Radswell has been making a lot of negative comments to the press and social media about her time on the show. Mm -hmm. You being an OG and always lasting on the show. What are your thoughts about people just talk? Like, what are your thoughts about that? Does that affect you in any way? You know, there's always disgruntled ex housewives out there, <laughs> you know, and if, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it. That's how I feel about it. And listen, she forgets to say how housewives has been a tremendous launching pad for her in many ways. And, you know, and I think it's, um, I just doesn't, I don't think it's a good look for her to be talking badly about you know, about the show, you know, um, it's like, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Same thing, it's, you know. This, so this backs off the other question. Would you say that's why you feel you've had a lot of longevity? On, like people wanna know why there's so much longevity with you and you've also crossed over. That's not easy, like a Bethany or a Kyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have your own brand, you, you, you're you like, you can transition basically. You've right. been acting, you've been a music artist. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, that's happened for you? Like, what are the steps you took? Well, oof, that's a, that's a big question. You know, listen, I never let the show become my life. My life is followed by the show. And so, you know, music has been always something that I've been interested in, you know, that I created a cabaret career out of it is still baffling to me. It's, uh, something I've always wanted to do. Don't forget, I come from a TV background. So, you know, before Housewives, I worked at Italian television. And so it's always been kind of a, I've, I've been a you know performer in a way as a model and as a TV personality in Italy, you know, um, for a long time, you know, since I'm 24 years old. So that's some time ago. And, uh, and so, you know, I think, longevity part of it for me is that you know i'm not somebody who really bashes other people um i wouldn't it's not my it's not my mo and um you know i just learned i think from my family you know seven children how to walk the line between different personalities because you know you're always going to have these different personalities and you you know love it or 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 not you know, we work together. So, you know, same with a family, you live together. So you have to find a way to make things work. So I think my family is one of the things that's helped prepare me for the housewives and, you know, and just, you know, sometimes you just have to plead the fifth. That's amazing <laughs> and advice. Zip it. I know. And you taught me that too, because I've learned from you so much. I'm like, how do you not want to yell at someone who just attacked your character, but you're right. You're right. It's well, you know, a lot of the times too is I feel like when you take, it's harder to take the high road and walk away than it is to fight back, you know, and generally, you know, uh, not to say I don't stick up for myself because I do, I just do it a different way. I don't yell. I try to talk and get my point across uh, because I feel it's more effective. I love that. What can we expect for the rest of the season from Lou, from the rest of the girls? What, do, what can we expect? Well, I mean, you know, uh, I think you're going to see a season of really resilience and, you know, us women living our lives in New York under a pandemic and Black Lives Matter and, and an election. I think we kind of touch on all of it throughout the season. So, you know, um, you're gonna kind of see us living our lives in New York and getting through like one of the worst um, pandemics in history. Um, and, you know, and us bonding through it and us, you know, having emotional problems because of it and the drama that ensues and the fun that we try to have and, and, and you know, in our little bubble. 
Because, you know, at some point you have to be like protective of yourself and just self-care and take care of yourself and take a bath and just go on a trip with three girls if you can, or five girls in our case, um, just to keep your spirits up, you know? And I'm hope, I hope that this season and helps keeps everybody's spirits up because, you know, it's been a difficult year. And so if we can add any kind of entertainment to that, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled because uh, it wasn't easy and, um, and I hope people uh, appreciate, you know, all the work that goes into it. I love that. I love it. Is there anyone you want to see come back? You know, getting dressed up every day, getting your jewelry on every day, putting your makeup, you know, when there's nobody outside <laughs> and, yeah. and you know, you're not gonna, you know, you're not going to meet anybody because there's nobody there. <laughs> so, so sad. Hard to keep it positive. Yeah. I want kudos for that. <laughs> yes, I agree a hundred percent because to do what you guys did during this, we are giving you kudos, no matter what the season right. is going to be amazing because come on, that's resilience and strength right there. I don't know if I could go through that. I don't know if a lot of people, people say what they want to say, cause it's easier to say, no, of but, course. but the fact that you're even giving that's been done easier said than done always. Mm -hmm. is, is Tom peeking in the, in the mirror? No, I mean, in the, in yeah. the no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now he's in Florida yeah the other question I guess is how do you stay how do you stay I'm sorry who would you like to see back did I ask you that I'm sorry see would back you, to the show yeah would you want to see someone come back Tinsley would should come back you know I hope wow. Tinsley comes back and you know who I think it'd be great back to the show is Aviva I agree Yes, and you guys were really good. Like you guys were close too, so that'd be nice. Yeah, you know I like Aviva, and you know she's actually married. <laughs> she's a house, right. real housewife. <laughs> right, because no one's really. I mean, you guys were all married, but now it's funny because you're not. I mean, it's the involvement. Single. We're, you're all single. Have you ever thought about it's getting sex in the city? <laughs> it is, and I love it. And you're so Carrie Bradshaw, and <laughs> you're like a mix of. What would you say you're a mix of? Oh, I get called Samantha all oh. the time. Yeah, but you're like a, I think in a classier way. Yeah, a mix. I'm a, a mix. mix. I'm a hybrid. Do you, what should we look forward for you in terms of the franchise of, of Housewives? Um, do you feel like there's still more, more for you to share? There's still more for you to contribute? Well, listen, you know, I, uh, yeah, I always say, you know, at the beginning of the season, you know, what am I going to do this season? And you know, and I just live my life and do my thing. And, um, and, you know, from one season to the next, I never know if I'm going to be back. So, you know, it's lucky number 13 for me. So. Well, God willing, it's 14 and 15, because we love you yeah. so much. And we uh -huh. need you on the show because, you know, you're the girl, you're the woman that we relate to. And we need that. We need good. And we need a peacemaker. And we need someone solid who's going to tell you how it is. And like you said, move on. It's okay to have issues, but it's how you, you know, make those, you know, issues go away or work through them, you know, and I think you're a really good example. I think you're a yeah. great example. Well, I look up, I look up to you. I always, and I ask you for advice. Sometimes I text you, I say, how would you handle it? And you always tell me, you know, mm -hmm. sweetheart, take the high road. You know, what right. are you going to, right. you don't want to get your hands dirty. A man of, <laughs> if, you, if you can help it. <laughs> Okay, one last question. Who would you say you're at odds with at, at most this season and the closest to? You know, I really am not really at odds with anybody in particular. And um, and I think, you know, I think I'm pretty close to all the girls, but probably closest to Leah and, and surprisingly Ramona this year. Right, and we can't wait to see, right, how that relationship develops yeah well Lou anything else you'd like to share with us a sneak peek of anything we should look forward to we're so excited for you we're so excited for the season well the sneak peek is you're going to see the music happening on the show uh gearing up for the cabarets which is the most exciting for me because that's my pure joy and um and you know and and my you know my sparkling fosé coming out you know I call it fosé because okay, it's okay I love that fosé, but it's faux um so i'm looking forward to that and um and just you know walking around without a mask on eventually i know me too and hopefully we can meet and have lunch and just like the old days you know just in person not not over zoom you know because like hopefully it's dying down 
Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I well, thank it's, you so it's good to see you. You look great. Congratulations on all your success with the podcast. Thank you so much. It's all because of you. You are the first <laughs> one. You're the first housewife. You're the first celebrity that really, you know, you took a chance on me and you helped me launch this and you were on it three times. Now it's the fourth time. And I can't, I'll always have, like, I'll just always thank you for that. And I'll always be your girl. And you know that we love you. We're always rooting for you. And where can everybody follow you? Oh, they can go to Countess Luann on Instagram and on um, CountessLuann.com for tickets eventually for my cabaret shows coming up in December in New York and Florida and everywhere. Hi, it's Countess Luann de Lesseps from the Real Housewives of New York City, and you're listening to iHeartRadio and Chanel in the City with my girl, Chanel Omari. 